Alright, so I wanted to do a video about the state of the game um, from a perspective of myself, um, really. But uh, I've been playing for four months. It'll be going on five towards the end of this month. I started at the end of November. Um, in November, there's a free month. So, like, I guess anyone that's watching this, I guess I'm going to do this from a perspective of people that are interested in the game. I, this is, I, I kind of been making a lot of the videos based around the videos I wanted to see content-wise um, from other people. Um, a good example of that is like, people will tell you all the time, don't buy the ships out of the game because you can buy them in game, but then they don't necessarily talk about like, how do you make the money? <laughs> so I had to do, I, I started with guides on like how to make money because I think that's an important part. I want to, I want to do want to reiterate that, that don't, you know, try to avoid buying so many of the ships out of the game because you can buy them in game. Um, the prices are going to fluctuate right now. The prices are set at a certain, but supposedly incoming, uh, soon, I think maybe the next patch 3.23, they're supposed to go up. Um, you know, will it actually happen? I, I don't know, but that's just kind of hearsay for now. But and that's the other thing. I do want to focus on this on this video on the here and now more so than what's coming. So, um, stay the game. Uh, a little bit. Uh, I'll start a little bit about myself. Um, I've been playing MMOs for a long time. Um, I haven't played a lot of MMOs. I will say that I've, but I have been playing MMOs um, most of my gaming um, time. So. That has been uh, something I've, I've stuck with quite a bit. I played a lot of World of Warcraft. Um, oddly enough, I started with um, something people won't really guess, but uh, EverQuest, but not any old EverQuest. I played with the Sony Online Experience one, like the EverQuest SOE version, the Sony Online Entertainment version of EverQuest. Um, my brother and I played that on the PlayStation on dial-up alone. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, yeah, so that shows how old I am, I guess. But anyways, um, yeah, so I've been playing a few different MMOs. I tried a bunch of different space games. Um, I do have Star Trek. Um, I did STO for a while. I, I did end up purchasing the um, like annual, like the Forever membership actually, which kind of paid off. I, if this game had something like that, I probably would invest in that. Um, you know, because every month I get like in-game currency or something like that. So th it's been fruitful um, to do that. But that game's never gonna necessarily. I, I like going in there and playing around occasionally, but it's not really gonna hold my interest, unfortunately. Um, same thing with Eve. I've played a little bit of Eve, not a lot. Um, every time I get into it, it's just like, I just feel like I'm behind. <clears throat> like I didn't, I didn't stick with it and get into it enough. I, I never really liked the progression system as far as it just takes time. So I've never really gotten into that. Um, I did play a bit of the Star Wars when it came out. Um, uh, not the original Star Wars that came out. Um, I'm blanking on names right now, but, uh, I played the, uh, the newer version um so yeah so but anyways no space game is really so i this one did i did kind of draw you so when it comes to people thinking about do they want to play this game um so state of the game is it's an alpha which is funny because i mean i told my, my youngest son that and um he's just like what it's an alpha that seems super sus and, and it is so the fact that it's been an alpha um actually in this case it, uh, for a while right right it's it's been kind of crazy that it's been in alpha and uh the b-roll of it just, is here is just me playing i, I don't know just kind of talking thinking out loud here but um yeah for the state of the game um it's still in alpha so if you're waiting for it to be released it's not released yet and maybe we'll see it next year and um it won't still be out but um i think that's a pretty interesting idea that it's been in uh this current state for such a long period of time uh, it's a little unfortunate yeah, i think that's something they need to kind of address uh, I think they just need to release it, honestly. Do a quick beta over, like maybe do a beta now um, for a year and then release it because I think it's it's almost there enough to, to be released. Um, so I guess that gives me a positive vibe about the game. So um, so still in alpha. There's a number of features that are in the game. Um, I think it's enough to... I mean, obviously, there's enough people playing it. Um, it, it, it generally holds my interest a fair amount. I mean, I make content for it, so clearly it's I'm interested in it. Um, but to some level of, of interest, oh, I totally didn't pay attention to where my ship is. We'll go with eight. I'll have to s it was four. Okay. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think it's, um, it's crazy. It's still, um, in alpha, like I mentioned before, but the feature wise, there's, there's enough to do to have fun. So I guess, so here's the thing. So it's 45 bucks to get an entry package. That's the one I would recommend. Um, I wouldn't necessarily spend more. I guess I say that, but I do like the, um, the cut list. You know, I haven't done a video yet on comparing the different, uh, ships, 
but um, if like I, today, if I talk to myself, I would tell myself just to spend, right now it's on sale too, so I would tell myself to spend the extra six bucks to buy, um, so 50, I'd pay the $51 to get the game package instead. And that's a little cheaper than like any AAA game that is generally somewhat potentially gonna be trash anyways. <laughs> like it's Diablo and stuff, not let's say Diablo's trash, but I'm just saying, like it's cheaper than some games that are out there. Um, and it's held my attention longer than those games. Um, for example, right now Hell Divers is popular. I played Hell Divers. I like it. Um, I did do a video on it because um, I played it there for a while. But I've already kind of gotten off of it and don't play it as much recently because it's good to have uh, f fun to play with friends. And some of the people that I was playing with have stopped playing it. So I don't know. I, yeah, I just it's one of those games where if you don't have people to play with, it's not fun. This is not one of those games. Actually, surprisingly enough, I play this game mostly solo. Um, so that's one thing that that I wanted. To kind of note as well um it's fun either it's i would just say it's actually kind of the yeah, i wouldn't say expect to play with a bunch of people and have fun that's actually kind of the opposite you know don't expect like a world warcraft type experience where you're like have a whole guild and you get to play together i mean there's some of that going on but it's not really in the same level um, there's no end game i would also say that um there's no classes i have notes here i'm following but I'm going to get back a little bit to the alpha thing. So the features, um, you know, is it what they would call a feature complete? You know, they wouldn't say so, sure. But there's been a bunch of feature creep. Like, there's a bunch of scaling creep um, to what they've created here. And I think that it's good enough. So the gameplay-wise, um, we'll get into that. I'll talk about there's no classes, really. Um, the, the ships themselves are somewhat classes. And then there's jobs or kind of professions to be done. And some of the ships help with that more than others. Uh, and then there's only one solar system. So there's only one system right now, the Stanton system. Another one's coming. But again, I'm not here to talk about what's coming. I'm here to talk about what's currently alive in the game and the current state of the game. Um, I'm, not, I'm not here to tell you that, oh, CIG has said that the new system's coming out once a month for the next 12 months or something. That would be great. But, uh, you know, and that's not the case. One's supposedly coming. But we're not here to talk about what should have, would have, should have, could have if we're talking about like what's currently alive in the, in the game. Um, so it's 45 bucks it's the starter package um i personally um i did that i picked up the mustang um i definitely would pick the aurora over the mustang i did it just because i knew i wasn't going to keep that mustang I, in I immediately went to the c8r i thought i was going to do a lot of bunker running and some mail missions um i did some of that in november so when you when you're playing in november you can get somewhat of a, a full um, experience out of it and what i did is some mailbox running which is you know you basically have a you know go pick up a box two or three and deliver them to a different location and it'll tell you where you want you know where the locations will be so i did some of that um uh, and i was thinking you know i'm trying to think of stuff for me when i first was starting i didn't really know where to make the most money um now i do obviously and i can i've given that guidance and guides so please go feel free to take a look at my channel if you found my channel through this um, feel free if you decide you want to play the game to look at my other content on guides how to make money quickly and buy whatever ships you want because i think that's something fun to do and in the current um patch that is possible so um yeah I, you know give that a try if you're interested in trying the game out you know i would definitely recommend picking one a low cost one of the lower cost entries and then from there um, you can always so there's the, the other thing too you can upgrade your ships so that is something you can do which means that you can pay the difference between two ships essentially so with the game package i think the game package is actually considered like more or less uh 20 bucks so if you're looking at um purchasing a game think of taking twenty dollars off of that total price i think that's about the price someone will correct me wrong you know if i'm wrong in the comments but i think that's more or less what the current price is for the actual game itself it comes with a, a ship but that ship is not gonna be worth that full value so you're, if you pay 45 dollars, that mustang alpha is not worth 45 dollars. i think it's worth 25 30 so maybe it's maybe 15 20 bucks maybe even 10 dollars for the game package itself versus the actual price of the ship so i did make that upgrade to a c8r it wasn't that much of a difference in price it's just the c8r is not as you can't you ha and that's the other thing you do have to pick a game package you can't just pick any ship you want that's kind of crazy to me <laughs> if you spend like 100 bucks or more just give them the game like it's it's ridiculous like it really is um that's a big hit on the game so if you feel like you don't want to play the game just because of that because you see a different ship and it's not available as a game package then thanks for watching and uh, unfortunately that's not possible uh, robert himself has decided that's not okay um which is crazy <laughs> so um if you spend x amount of money you should be able to play the game for free um anyways that's my personal thought um Referral codes. So um, I appreciate there's been one person so far that's used my referral code. Um, people could probably see my referral code, so they see there's two, but I have two accounts. So uh, I, I've friended myself, uh, which is not uncommon. I am World of Warcraft. Back in the day, I did recruit a friend myself for a second account. So um, yeah, yeah um, at any rate, um, 
referral codes are nice, so I appreciate those. I usually try to put them in my description, so I do appreciate those that take the time to use a referral code if they can. If they've already used it, that's you know that's fine too. But I appreciate those that have taken the time to uh, pick up that referral code. Um, that's nice, and I appreciate that. Um, so ships uh, expensive uh, is what I've noted here, <laughs> and I think they are. Like in out of the game, I think the ships are pretty ridiculous. Now, unfortunately, these days in the gaming industry, that's not necessarily coming out of line they're out of line don't get me wrong like to spend hundreds of dollars for a ship uh, is i think for me is is, is too much um each person has their own appear uh, you know idea on what they can spend in a game you know, i'm not here to tell you what you should spend in a game if you think it's worth it then then buy it but um the price of these ships is is, is pretty ridiculous so i think buying them in a game is a good way to obviously test them out and see if you like them um, but i wouldn't necessarily i don't i prefer people not to spend that that money if they again if they want to support the game that's that's fine but i think there's a lot of that they're leaning heavy on that whole oh but you're supporting the game i think at this point we're well past that um that was my real true honest opinion and I, again i make content for this game so it's not like i'm i'm trying to be unbiased as possible here so i think those prices need to come down um in a lot of cases at least half sometimes more at any rate, um, but feel free to spend whatever it is that you're going to spend on the ships. But again, I think those ships are expensive. The, the, again, the ones you're purchasing out with real, real, real world money, um, they can be very expensive. Um, bugs and service stability. So the game does still have bugs. Um, so far for me, most of the bugs have been something I can work through. Uh, I feel like some bugs too are more common for people that are playing multiplayer. Like there was a bug there for a while that if two people shot their tractor beam at a box um, to try to move it, it would like break the box so that kind of stuff i can see how it'd be annoying but most of the bugs i find um, i can work through them or i find a way around them and i, I don't know i'm as an again as an mmo player that's played or i've played enough early access games i guess i just learned to deal with them um, that's another thing again because this is early access if you have something in your head that says like i don't want to support early access because it could just die which i had that problem I, I played i think everquest was supposed to come out with some minecraft everquest a long time ago and i put in a support package and it just i just wasted that money so i get that like not wanting to spend too much money in something in this case it's playable now so for me that's how i justified saying you know what yeah i'll give it a try and it seems stable enough um, so going back to the server stability there is some challenges with that it seems right now you can get about 100 people in a server um, and it'd be funny if I, while I'm doing this, I get a server crash. But um, anyways, um, server crashes do happen. They're supposed to be doing some uh, some stuff to fix that. But again, we're talking about the current state. Current state is you can get a server crash. Um, it, it gives you an error called 30,000. So people call it a 30K. Um, there is some, um, I'll say assurances, not insurance, but assurances that your character kind of stays okay from that which is it's going to kind of there's kind of something that goes on <clears throat> i don't know if it's taking a snapshot of your character at that current time or during that crash or whatever but um, it seems to put you back on your home planet or your home location uh, or your, your your respawn location um, with everything you have um, and your ship gets kind of stored in a hangar there's mixed results generally speaking you keep the loot and stuff that you had in your ship i say that generally because i've like in a, been a, in a reclaimer for example and if my reclaimer gets sent back sure all my boxes that i've already processed have been kept Ugh, contract failed literally i was too far away and it just failed this mission so that's that's fun that's a thing um like i failed that service i should have looked at the service maybe i should have looked at the location <laughs> sorry so triggered no uh <laughs> um anyway let's we'll go back to crusader then maybe i'll just do some bounty hunting i, I don't know i'm just again i'm just trying to kill time here yeah, this is just it's stuff going on in the background um so yeah so the service stability crashes crashes do occur um they are unfortunate they're annoying um but they do care they do occur i wouldn't say it's like super common um i don't know i play enough hours that it seems to kind of mellow out it doesn't seem to be overly affect me i've also at the point where i've made enough money that it doesn't affect me i can see how if you're doing trading or something or if you're doing something that isn't somehow protected by the 30k inch assurances that they kind of put into the game that it could be frustrating so um <clears throat> there's bugs there's server instability occasionally um Again, I think the game is at a relatively playable point. It's not like it's, like I said, like if I compare it to World of Warcraft or something like that, it's refined where servers generally stay up. Now, I would say it's, you know, that kind of stability stuff, you can still see it in something like World of Warcraft with the releases of new expansions or when WoW comes out with, you know, maybe do Classic or something. There's been many times I've had to wait on servers to get space. And so it's not like it's common to just this game. Um, now, that's rare. Like they were talking about launch days and within a particular launch period. 
Um, okay, so no classes. There are no classes in the game. Each character, um, there's no difference really, largely, um, except for like the stuff you purchase, like as far as gear you buy, which you can buy in game. Um, obviously, there's stuff you can buy out of the game too, but I, I wouldn't say recommend. I really don't recommend that because there's no um, insurance on that kind of stuff. So when you're buying something like a helmet or something, if you die, you have to go back and get it. If you don't get it or someone steals it, then it's just gone. So that's until the patch comes up, until it can reset it. So that that's ridiculous. So don't don't waste money on stuff outside of the game, um, as far as gear is concerned. Um, <clears throat> The ships themselves do have a bit of an insurance piece. Um, it's not fully implemented yet. So this is why, again, I keep talking about a little bit of future state stuff, but the current state is, is that anybody can um, request to claim their, they call it claiming your ship, just like you would claim an insurance piece. Um, you can claim your ship at any time once it's lost, whether that means you destroyed it or you left it somewhere. Let's say I, I leave this ship right here and I kill my character that's the other thing you can backspace your character there's like a clone system so um you would just get a new clone um when i do that i'm going to go to wherever it is I've, I've set my spawn point and from there um i can just claim my ship even if i leave my ship out here and it doesn't cost me anything now what it would cost me to do is get it a little bit quicker um each ship's going to have the bigger the ship too the longer it's going to take for you to wait obviously for that claim to go through um that's probably just kind of a, a little bit of a money sink but you can expedite it now you can't expedite it to instant you can expedite it to some are instant right if it's a really low um like a beginner ship or something it might be relatively instant um maybe instance isn't really a right term but it could be like within 30 seconds or something or maybe a minute whereas some ships still take it could take like 30 minutes to claim it and it could take it down to maybe 10 minutes or something um again very depending on the size of the ship and stuff like that it could take longer and even if you expedite it which you do have to pay end game money for um it, it could take longer as well and uh that expedition expedited cost um has a diminishing return so a lot of people would say if you're just starting out, don't pay for the expedite. Um, I've always generally done it because I've generally had enough money to do it and I don't want to wait around forever. I think the time value of money, right? If you think you can instantly get back into the game and do something and make money right away, it's worth it. It, it could be worth it, right? Time value money. So um, it's not a sunk cost fallacy here. If you can get right back into doing whatever you were doing that was actually making money and it's more money than you spend on getting waiting for your ship, then it was worth it. Uh, now, if you don't have, if you want to, if, if you're going to log off or something for the night, don't don't do it, right? Just wait for it to, because it'll still run while you're um, offline. Um, jobs. So jobs and professions. That's generally going to be the classes that are available. Um, there are the jobs or professions that you decide to do in game. That is to say the content you choose to actually to partake in is going to be your, um, and there's no specific, like I haven't decided to, I want to be a miner or something. That's not um, what's really happening here. There's certain missions, and then there's also um, some instances where things don't necessarily have missions, but you can choose to do them. So you get to choose your profession, you can change it anytime, and I can do it. Now, again, what I mentioned before is that your ships are going to kind of determine um, what you're going to be doing. So like I'm looking right now, I'm in a, a Crusader. Uh, I think this is the Ion. No, this is not the Ion. This is the Inferno. Um, I'm in the A-10. Um, so I call it the A-10 because this big gun on the right-hand side here is like equivalent to the, the Burt cannon on the, uh, the uh, Gout. Eight, ten? No, Gal eight. I think it's the Gal eight. Uh, anyways, it's equivalent to like the the um, gun that's on the the A ten. So, anyways, um, this is clearly not like a hauler, or maybe it's not clear, right? But this is not like a hauling ship. Like, I'm not gonna be able to buy a bunch of material and transport it somewhere else. This is meant for like bounty hunting or 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 PVP. Not really. I mean, people would say it's not meant for PVP, but it's meant for like shooting and and like you know aerodynamic gameplay. Again, I'm using these terms, but it's not, it's like a fighter aircraft. It's a heavy, it's actually a heavy fighter class, right? So um, the different ships you have are going to be based around what it is you can do. So um, that is, again, to say that this, this ship is just made for that. I could do some other things with it. Like I can, I don't know, this is really pretty limited. I can't put a box in here even. So even if I wanted to like do mail or something like that, I couldn't do that, a glorified mail delivery person. Um, so what are some professions? Let's, let's, we'll take a look through that. So, um, the first one I have here is salvage. Um, obviously that's one I would, you know, if I count on myself, what's a, like a main profession I like to do salvage is probably it. Um, that one just is, is stuck with me. I like it quite a bit. And so I would, I would count that one to be probably my main profession. Um, and then there's something like, uh, mining. Mining is both planet side. You can, you can find minerals and stuff, excuse me, on a planet. Or you can find the asteroids and stuff that you can mine. Um, you have to refine that material. So unlike salvage, salvaging, um, you can kind of either scrape off of a, um, a ship 
or you can break a ship down into its finer construction material and then gather that up. But your ship will have everything it needs to do all of that. As far as actually refining those materials, you're going to have a um, like a processing unit in either of the two ships that currently do that to handle all the salvaging. Whereas mining, that's not the case um, currently in game. You have to mine, you gather the materials, and you have to refine them somewhere else. Now you can pay, you can just sell them unrefined, but obviously you're going to get more of a profit if you decide to refine it. You have to go to a refiner and have it done there. So that's where. There's a little bit of an off put between those two particular professions because of that particular components missing. Um, PPE combat. So I have a couple here. One is one I was trying to partake in here, which is around, you know, service beacons or bounty hunting. Um, there's a couple of different PVE components. There's also some ground PVE around FPS where you can go to bunkers. Unfortunately, with the way AI is right now, I would say AI is either hit or miss, and I would lean more towards a miss than a hit. Um, it seems to be fairly potato. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't give it a whole lot of credit um, of being um, very awesome. It's it's just unfortunate right now that um, the AI is like you'll find when you go to space stations and stuff. It'd almost be better if they just left the AI out from that kind of stuff because they don't do anything. Literally just standing around um, and not doing anything at all. Sometimes standing up on chairs or standing up on items. It's just they're almost it's almost like they should have taken the. Uh, the uh, Fallout 76 approach and just said if it's a if it's a person it's it's another player and not necessarily AI. Obviously they can't do that for all game components, but at least some of the stations and stuff maybe almost should have done that, <laughs> except for maybe vendors or something. Um, so yeah, AI is still a bit of a bus and uh, bust and and maybe not you know a lacking feature a bit, uh, but it's it's playable enough. Um, you'll usually find that you can do stuff. Uh, you've seen some of my other videos around bounty hunters and stuff and. Um, yeah, I think it's it's something you can still do. Oh, I came in way too hot. I wasn't paying attention. It's like I'm talking during a YouTube video or something. Um, PvP. PvP is generally a thing. Um, I say generally because, I mean, it's something not a lot. I think not a lot of people are, and maybe it's just me, right? Maybe I'm just not doing it a lot, but um, I feel like a lot of people aren't necessarily taking part in that. Again, you have to kind of make your own fun with that one. Um, we'll talk a little bit about like pirating later, um, but. You have to kind of go out of your way to PvP, and I think most people don't want to PvP in this game, or don't generally have an interest in doing it. Um, there's not a lot to lose even for PvP, so it's not like it's it's a big deal either way. Um, some hauling. So there is some hauling. Um, you have to kind of make your own hauling, though. In a lot of ways, Star Citizen, so far, this is the stuff I've mentioned, uh, except for PvP. Mm, that's not true. PvP, actually, there's a bounty hunting. There's two bounty hunting systems. There's bounty hunting against... Um, PVE, which is most common when you people talk here talking about bounty hunting, they're generally talking about I think against um, AI. Well, there is actually a bounty hunting component where you can go after people that are bad, um, and so that that's something that uh, um, can be done. Is you can do PVP against another player in that regard. Um, you can find contracts. So like if I look through here and I go to bounty hunting section, and see these are some of the stuff you can do like racing, um, but there should be uh, this apprehension. Yeah, so this is going after somebody. So this is a player. Um, it'll tell you who he wants to go after. But um, yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't generally take part in that. But people do, right? You can you can be a bounty hunter against other players. So the, and those are players that are um, like have crime stats and stuff. So there's a crime stat system based upon things that you do um, in the game. You know, if you were to do PvP, then you're obviously going to start getting crime stats. If you steal ships or whatever, uh, or steal things, you're you're going to have a crime stat. So. There's a crime stat system. Um, so if I go back here, oops, I can see that currently um, I have no crime stat. Excuse me, I'm getting very tired. Um, long day. And then mailman. So there's a glorified kind of mailman. There's a delivery um, section here where you can kind of deliver uh, different pieces of, of mail and whatnot and, and packages. Um, I I actually don't. I mean, I recommend people do that maybe a little bit. That's what I started on a little bit. Um, I tried bunkers, but bunkers were broken. So that's why I couldn't really stick with playing bunkers. I, I started in 319 into 320. I think they were better by 320, but I'd already moved on anyways. Um, but yeah, you, being able to do um, those kinds of missions, uh, bunker running was, was not something I could do. There's a bunch of guides on it, but none of it was working. And that's the other thing too, right? Sometimes you might find that certain things are not working. Um, at least in my experience, that's not really overly been the case. It's just that bunker piece was the only thing that's been not working for me once. Um, 
some exploration. Uh, but anyway, so the mailman, sorry, one thing I want to tie up with that is you're starting off as a male person, you're just moving from A to B, and there's no PvE or PvP going on. Um, I would say later on, the changes where you have to go to areas, whether you're, I don't know if it's just for picking up or for delivery, but there's instances where you go to get boxes and it's actually PvE. There's bots there. So um, yeah, you have to start bringing gear and stuff. So I don't, that's why I don't normally recommend that one because it eventually elevates as you get, do more deliveries, you eventually have to start doing um, combat for a mailman, which is, is kind of crazy. Um, yeah, some exploration. I put that because there's a number of spots you can kind of go to to get these boxes, like red boxes, where they have items. And so there's some exploration because you can kind of, like, you can go anywhere and do anything. You know, so there's certain spots you can go where there's going to be bots and stuff. So you can collect gear. And um, that's the only exploration component I would currently consider in the game. Um, otherwise, there's no real, like, oh, I can't go find a different solar system or something that, that doesn't currently exist in the game. So I do consider exploration, but I consider it to be, like, you're going to go to certain sites. There's some websites, too, and maybe I'll do a video on that. If people are interested, you know, do an exploration video. Um, I may do that uh, and set up a look at that particular site and go to those locations and take a look and see what's there. Unfortunately, other people do the same thing, and so a lot of, a lot of times you go there and someone's already been there, or so it's, it's not super um, lucrative or... It's, it's somewhat interesting because you can get some, actually some of the games I mentioned before, some of the items you can you can pick up um, are are there. And so there is an ability to get some of those purchases you're supposed to buy in the store in the game um, for free without it, through some of that exploration gameplay. Um, let's see. Some medical. Um, I picked up the CADR because I thought maybe I would do more. Ooh, this is an HRT. I'll do the MRT because I'm talking. Maybe I'll still die. We'll see you guys can laugh at me. I'll laugh at myself here in a bit. Um, I would do some higher ones, but again, I'm talking and I, I'm not paying full attention. I'm standing here in my ship half the time. Um, so some medical, um, there's like beacons. So if you die, you can technically leave a beacon. I've never done that. I don't care. Like <laughs> there's no um, real loss, except unless you're somebody who's decided to um, purchase things outside of the game and you want them back because you somehow you kept them on you um yeah then you may you know need to get picked up by somebody but generally speaking most people don't do that matter of fact as i'm sitting here i don't think i've even seen one medical beacon come pop up and so it's it's not super common i was hoping it'd be a little more common but the other thing is it's sus too like i mean you have to assume that that person's actually hurt and not like um a pirate crew or something that somehow wants you to come in and hoping in, that's, that's the other thing about being a pirate crew. like they have to hope that somehow you're coming in with uh, a ship full of gear or something uh anyways it, there's like it's not um uh, there's a chance it could get spicy uh racing so there is racing i have not done it so i can't tell you much about it my i think it's just like i don't know maybe it's racing from point a maybe it's a time trial thing um yeah but racing is some of the thing i don't know much about it so I'm not, i can't speak to it too much but racing is a component to this game I think it's both air and ground vehicles. I know it's air vehicles, like they're racing type of vehicles. I don't know if there's ground ones. Um, I think people do choose to do ground stuff, but I don't think there's necessarily a game um, piece for that. Sorry, okay. So events, there are random events that they'll come with, out with. Um, usually you'll see, like when I first got started, there's some kind of incursion going on right now. A Zenith incursion or whatever. Um, you'll see it because I get spammed by it. <laughs> so um, you probably saw it on my screen before. But um, yeah, sometimes there's events going on, which is cool. Um, but it's not something I overly necessarily take part in. It depends on what the event is, I guess. Um, prison. So I just have a note in here about prison. I'll talk about piracy and a little bit about refueling. Um, <clears throat> so prison, there is a prison system. If you, if you have a crime stat and you die, technically you go to prison. Um, don't pass code, don't collect $200. And so with that, um, unfortunately or unfortunately... Oh, why'd my gun not go? This? Oh, that's weird. It's the other trigger. That's I was not expecting. That's like shooting like my secondary gun. That's really weird. All right, let me just pew pew this guy. Oh yeah, that one. All right, should have picked the HRT, huh? Um, so this is like ballistics here, and I'm so I'm just doing. <laughs> let me just um, R Kelly these guys really quick. Um, that's inappropriate. Don't talk like that. My dog was barking. Uh, or maybe I'll leave it in there. Keep it spicy. Um. So yeah, prison. You, you can go to prison um, for doing no-nos, and um, it's not super meaningful. People, you can break out of prison. You can spend time just you know, maybe log off for the night. I shoot these missiles. I mean, I can shoot these missiles down while I actually hit them. I'm wasting ammo at this point. Um, I, I'm not using my. I don't think I'll actually get hit. I'm not gonna use my decoys. Um, we are cooking. 
so yeah um prison is a thing um i finally find it a minor nuisance early on you might like accidentally maybe i should use decoy issues um early on you might find that um you go to prison because maybe you crash into something on accident or something so prison i don't know i've gone to prison a couple times i can't really remember the circumstances it's been a long time since i've gone to prison even when i was doing pirating that's just kind of funny um we'll go to refueling next before piracy uh, piracy um refueling there's a refueling ship you could do it but again people just like backspace their ship or whatever it's pretty rare that someone actually needs you to refuel so there's only technically there's two it's the same ship but two different variants uh, there's two variants of the same ship um for refueling i have it i actually kind of like it it's kind of terrible because of the, like the layout of it and everything but um yeah there is a, a way to do refueling all right i'm not to jump away because this guy's like oh let's go to the security boats that's a good idea speaking of prison um okay so piracy so piracy is a part of this game um currently i think they're looking to like make it a pvp and again we're not talking about future state i need to make sure i stop doing that but um current state of the game is there is a piracy component and so piracy is a thing you can get pirated and people can take your stuff um take your ship whatever it may be it's not super common um and i think people should try every and so like an uncommon uh, this is an unpopular opinion i think people should if you're going to spend the time playing a game in apple like this i think you should spend the time to um to try most of the gameplay loops see if you like it so um, right now it's fairly harmless nothing right now is permanent like it's supposed to get all reset so i think it's fairly harmless i mean don't be a turd about it right like i mean you have people choose what level of like degeneracy they choose to tip partake in right but um i think most people are just interested in trying the different gameplay loops um it also lets you i think it's another unthought about thing is that um you're doing something like piracy <coughs> excuse me oh, i didn't pick up this merchant um mercenary mission i should have um always pick up the call to arms <laughs> i forgot to do that <laughs> anyway it's a little extra money there um but yeah um people always think that like pirating super easy it's just like but it's a lot of w hurry up and wait and so um the only way you're going to find out about defeating piracies is to take part of piracy to understand um you know if you want to do counterinsurgency i'm not saying you have to be an insurgent but you have to understand insurgency in order to, to counter that kind of um thing that's going on so same thing like piracy be counter piracy in order for me to make some of the comments about om jump points stuff like that is because um i've either been a part of piracy or i've i've been hit by piracy and both of those unfortunately are true uh, i don't say unfortunately i mean i've i somewhat i mean piracy is not a big thing uh, for me what i would want to do as a pirate i'd want to be a, like a, on a reclaimer reclaimer crew maybe like a, a reclaimer for hire um allow myself to do salvage vulture or reclaimer um for pirates I think the idea of coming in to clean up a ship like that, um, maybe I can sell back the stuff, or not sell it back to the person, but I don't know, right? There's there's things you could potentially make some gameplay out of it. I don't, the idea of just thinking of piracy is, is bad. Um, I think there's, there's another thing is it's going to be always a check on, um, like right now it's hitting salvagers hard because piracy is going to always be a good counterpoint check to any kind of thing that makes a lot of money because pirates are going to go after the thing that's the juiciest um, income maker because there's going to be a counterbalance to that. Um, that that CIG can't ever keep up with because they're gonna always try to balance how much money you make from here or there. But um, pirates will always end up showing you where the the highest money maker is. Um, it could be hauling. It could be like, hey, this particular route gives you a bunch of money. Well, then you'll find pirates on that route because that's it's gonna always be a check on um, income that you can make. Anyway, so I'm not trying to oversell piracy. I'm just saying um, there's some things to it. A lot of people would say like, oh, you think it's okay to be a pirate? Well, I, I mean, I'm not saying we're playing a video game here. That's a that's a lot equivalent to saying anyone who plays a video game is going to be violent because that's that's not necessarily the case. Um, it's just a game, <laughs> so we're all just playing a game here. Um, if you can't tell the difference, then don't play this game because you you think everything's real. Um, yeah, so those are some of the main points. Um, I think state of the game is so. I'm mean, personal opinion wise. Obviously, I've shared some opinions already, but I think it's interesting. I think it's worth a try. For me, it was worth forty five bucks. Um, I think for most people, it probably would be these days um the way pricing is 45 bucks is not much anymore so it might be worth a try for any particular person to give it a go and see if they like it um like i said you can if you're in a special event time frame like november i know for sure i don't know if they do that other times please leave a comment below if anyone knows but i know for november for sure you can play it for free i see no harm no foul in that so if you, if you want to give it a go um also you can play pretty much any ship so um that also give you an opportunity to maybe try out a ship that you have it that you want to kind of try out that's what kind of got me into the carrick i originally thought like oh, i'd never want a ship like this and it was pretty cool like i mean you really kind of it's pretty immersive to be in a ship that big um i mean obviously the reclaimers in a similar vein but the carrick just feels a little bit different i like kind of the different 
areas it has and I don't know it, it's a pretty interesting ship <coughs> it's also old they probably need, they need to revamp some in a lot of ways it's it's fairly useless I would definitely never not recommend anyone buying it um, especially as a first ship um, but anyways it's it's a fun ship to be in um, so yeah take a look at guides take a look at the different ships that's something I probably should do I should probably do some ship um, say guys with ship reviews and talk about different thoughts. Um, I tried a little bit with the Vulture. I did a valuation too. That valuation was a look at um, how much it cost to actually um, get that ship um, and play it um, or paying if I were going to pay out, out of a real world money versus if I converted my money to in-game money and kind of what the difference in price was and it was not good. Um, I, that price on that ship, the Vulture, Vulture currently, so how I want to do reviews is talk about what's it cost in game versus what it costs in real world dollars. And um, is it cheaper to buy in the game or is it cheaper to buy in real world um, cash? And um, that valuation is what's kind of doing that, taking a look at those two. And that is to say that the Vulture um, is more expensive out of the game for no reason. Like it's it's more expensive than um, even the, the mining vehicle we talked about yet there's really no reason for it to be that way. Um, it, it, they both are entry levels to those particular jobs, and there's no reason that one should be more expensive than the other. Yet, um, oddly enough, in-game, the Vulture is less expensive than that same mining vehicle, but out of game, it's more expensive. So I can't make that make sense. So that's why I, I would say I wouldn't buy that vehicle in-game. And so right now, my guys are focused around, it is purchasing that Vulture, but it's purchasing it in-game um, with that money. So they need to do one of two things. They need to raise the price, unfortunately, in the game, or they need to lower it out of the game, which I think they won't do the latter, right? So they're going to do it on the the first part there, which is raise the, the price of it in the game. Um, yeah, I don't want to drag this on too long. Those are my thoughts. You can always ask comments below if people are interested in my thoughts on anything else, but um, I just want to share my thoughts. I generally like the game, clearly. I play it. Um, but some of the practices and some of the things that are done with it are off-putting a bit, um, to say the least. And I do wish they would just come out with it already. It's close enough um, to be to be playable, so they should just make it playable. Um, oh, there's a medical right there. So right there's a rescue beacon I'm talking about. So if someone wants me, you know, spend 15k to get picked up, and I just don't think it's worth the money right now. Um, sorry, a little sidetrack there, but. Um, there probably was another medical beacon that came up, but that's kind of the extent of the medical gameplay right now that you're going to typically find, um, unless you're playing with it. So that's the other, there are like guilds and stuff, there are um, squadrons and stuff. Um, I don't know if I'm using the right terminology, but there, um, I don't know, it's, it's like self fun there. You have to kind of make up your own events and stuff. There isn't really, there's no real in game. Like there isn't like a, hey, we're all going to show up and blow up this vehicle. Sometimes there's events like that, but it's generally um, fewer and farther between. I don't want to say that's a common thing at all. So that. That's the current state of the game. Um, hope you enjoyed watching. Um, thanks to those that have taken time to watch most of my content and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time.